Hello, everybody. Oh, hello. Today, today we're gonna to be doing another video in the how to build a blank deck type series. Um, and this video is gonna be different and interesting because it's um, it's about how to build future format decks, right? Like, look, there's a bunch of different types of decks, but this video is gonna focus on before a set has come out, you see myself, you see other creators uh, on YouTube or elsewhere talking about, oh, I'm gonna use this card and pair it with that card, whatever that's gonna be. How do those creators come to find all these cards and how do they build the decks and how do they practice with them? So this is really how to build a future format deck. If that's something you're interested in doing, whether it's for content or just for like building it yourself so you can test things out before they come out in America or Europe or anywhere outside of Japan. Uh, so this conversation is gonna be with Shay from the Slowpoke Well. Shout out to Shay. I will link his channel in the description. Um, yeah, he's gonna be just chatting with me about build, building for a future format. Uh, he does a lot of that similar to the way that I do it. So definitely check his channel out. He's got some spicy decks he's working on right now. Uh, I just also wanted to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video by ptcgocodes.com. Uh, they are sponsoring this video and the channel for a bit. And uh, yeah, if you need code cards or codes for PTCGO, uh, Darkness Ablaze, any other codes, you can head over to their site and get them for 5% off with the code Gyroshan. So uh, definitely check that out. And yeah, link is in the description if you need those code cards and uh, code cards. And thank you to them again. All right, uh, so without further ado, let's just uh, jump into the conversation between me and Shay. Yeah, just uh, if you wanna go ahead and uh, give uh, everybody who somehow doesn't know about you a little bit of info. I think that's quite a few people to be fair. Yeah, but well, I, fair, I'm enough, Shay. fair enough, fair <laughs> enough. Uh, I run the Slow Poke World YouTube channel. Um, we, we just we just do a whole lot of Pokemon TCG fun, baby. Future format stuff, you know, TCGs, the vlog, we do it all. Um, been playing for about bloody yeah, a long time since boundaries crossed. So I think that comes in at about what ten years or so, maybe. Um, I've been playing only the last like few have been competitive because if anyone sort of knew me before I was playing competitive stuff, you'd see me rock up to like uh, city championships with a uh, Togetic, you've uh, got EX, all that sort of mad stuff. So. Um, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's about me, really. All right, yeah. So uh, also, the reason I wanted to have uh, Shay on for this one is because he thinks of lots of crazy decks, and uh, I think yeah. that's a part of building future format too, is having that imagination to think of what crazy combos might come out. So, so I guess the first question then is, um, you know, why? Why do you, I think, focus on future format? I know some creators focus on. Really, they're all about standard for the most part, um, or whatever's mm -hmm. currently on PTCGO. I know you and, you and myself, I think, lean a little bit more into future format. So what really inspires you and drives you to build for that? <laughs> uh, I'd say, well, the last two set inclusions, so like Rebel Clash and then uh, the post rotation format two, I've really gone all in. And I think <laughs> coming into Darkness of Blaze, uh, I was sick of that Rebel Clash format. I wasn't a fan. So I was just like, let's just go all in and start building. I find that more fun, right? I like to like look forward to, you know, see what sort of mad stuff, you know, we can build and play. Um, it's just fun, isn't it? Look at new stuff. Um, give it out, print it all out and play some games. Also good practice. So when it does come on TC Joe, um, you're already a little bit a step ahead. <laughs> That's but, true. Um, <laughs> Just, just because some of the, it seems to be like <clears throat> with the way they're printing sets now, you obviously know like Eternity is going to be nuts. So you just want to figure out like, how actually bonkers is this archetype that, that they're throwing upon us. Um, yeah, and I just, I just love playing with new, new shiny things. Really, a bit of a magpie in that regard, I guess. <laughs> no, I think you're right. Like you know, the new stuff can keep it fresh for you. If like the current format is just not that interesting, um, mm. looking ahead, you know, for a, for a certain players can be like the thing that keeps them in the game. I guess the next question then is like, okay, well, you may want to play in future formats, but uh, yep. how do you find out what cards are going to be coming out? What are the resources that you use? Uh, well, I guess off the rip, man, Poker Beach is probably the main one, right? I've got them on like Twitter, Facebook, and I just, you know, follow the page as well. So uh, they tend to be like the first place you can see stuff for the most part with like translations. Uh, PDC Radio as well, because anyone doesn't know about them. He's normally quick on the draw with the sort of new uh, new translations and stuff. And I guess sometimes I've been using Twitter a lot more now as well. I think, uh, shout out to Talonite, I think Talonite X, he's quite quick on the draw of bringing out new stuff as well. Um, yeah, just a combination of all three, you can sort of um, sort of pick and choose. 
And then from there, you can sort of try and gauge from the Japanese sets what's going to be in our set. Sometimes I'm wrong. Um, and then just go from there, really. I think they're the main resources for sure. Yeah, it's interesting. It's very different, I think, than, uh, you know, you can't really use Facebook. You can't really use the limitless stuff yeah. like that. You got to... And the Twitter thing is interesting, right? Like Talonite, Tony Lay. There's a few people, I guess, who speak Japanese, maybe? Or, like, how, are good enough at translating that they can, like... Yeah. Tell you what cards are coming out, like, translate it or and do all that stuff. So how do you evaluate the strength of those of those different cards like based on both like the translations and then maybe what's going on in the japanese meta uh well for the most part you know when pokemon they do this thing where like, they'll print obviously good cards and there'll be like some like filler cards all right so you can look at a card like, okay this one's meant to be good let's have a look um and for the most part if a card's got any sort of potential i will just build a deck for it like sort of like houndoom for example now might not be the most in your face uh, card from Dance of Blaze. Well, I will give it a go. It's actually quite decent as well, to be fair. So that's okay. But um, so from there, if I think this card's worth building a deck for, I will see if there have been any Japanese deck lists about. Again, PTC, Jiraiya, and Talonite seem to be the best two for like full deck lists, Japanese ones. Um, and then from there, uh, we'll just. I like to try and keep the deck super streamlined. I don't like to think about text and stuff. I like to just keep it, keep it very narrow. For like for Houndoom again, for example. Um, I guess you could play some other sort of like giant bombs and stuff. If you really want to get technical, but for first, just like no, streamline it. Let's see if its core concept is good enough, and then you know from there you can look into like you know branching out so to speak. <laughs> so in terms of like ideating, uh, creating that deck, uh, do you mm -hmm. usually start from scratch yourself? Or do you take a Japanese deck list as the base? I know this maybe varies between different decks. Some decks don't have yeah, Japanese yeah, yeah. lists. Uh, but typically, what do you do? I think for the most part, a combination of both. I like to look, look at at least a Japanese list, if I can, just to sort of gauge and sort of see like what sort of car counts. And are they running Jiraichi? Are they not? Are they running like this support lineup and that support lineup? What's their engine if there is one? Um, but then for a lot of decks, also if that's not available, I will just go off. I will just go off the rip and freestyle it. Like, um, you know, because a lot of these cards like we're in like X Y two right now, aren't we? With like Mega Ray and Eternatus. So I can sort. You can sort of look at a card if it's sort of similar to an old card, like a Vicavolt, like Toad, similarly as well. Um, you can sort of build it off that. Like I'm not. Yeah, building from scratch is a lot harder though. I feel like <laughs> uh, it's possible. But it's harder. <laughs> How do you actually go about testing? I know there's a variety of different ways that you can get the cards, like quote unquote, the cards in your hands. Uh, but like, yeah, how yeah. do you test and uh, yeah, how do you capture the footage for your gameplay? I've always, especially now with the way it is in other events, I've always preferred tangible testing. So um, for the most part, I know the Rebel Clash stuff, I was doing all uh, IRL. So I'll just like print off the Japanese uh, cards. Well, recently there's been some guy, I actually don't know who he is, but he does, he translates cards super early and puts him like a Google Drive. Uh, I don't know who this person is, but he's a champion for that, whoever that guy is. So I'll print them off. Um, and then I play um, on like IRL with my sister. She's a champion. I'm like, so oh, can, can we can we come and do a best of three today? Can we do this? And she was like, come down and play. Um, so I just get I just get get like, the camera point at the table. But I know recently, sort of more so the post uh, the darkness of blaze stuff. I should say uh, table uh, tabletop simulator sort of came to the front. You know, loads of creators. Like, I know yourself, uh, the Sable Eyes, uh, Omnipot. They were all jumping on that. And I was just too lazy to set my ways up to get on it eventually. But I think moving forward, I think that's probably the uh, the better way. Um, but I'll probably still print off and play IRL as well. It's just fun to actually play cards for sure. Because what I like about tabletop as well, like unlike TCGO, like because I know when I'm playing games with my sister, if she doesn't like spot a play or she spots play too late, I can go, oh, yeah, just you know just 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 put it back and we'll go without play instead. I think tabletop because it's not like. TCG Joe, where it does everything for you, you can just like rewind or put a card back, can't you? And do that, which I think for testing purposes uh, is like a godsend, right? Which TCO just doesn't let you do. So, tabletop's pretty good for that for sure. Yeah, I think that brings up another good point about when you're actually testing, which is uh, not being so strict on, you know, specific rules, which is like everybody's learning the cards. Yeah. So, I think for that's a thing for viewers. If you are watching Shay's content about like future format and you see like, maybe something weird and then he needs to reverse it like you know this is cut a little slack time like we're still figuring <laughs> yeah. stuff out <laughs> yeah um, for sure <laughs> uh so in terms of like testing the deck um yeah when you're like when you've built a deck do you mm -hmm. immediately go into like battles with other people 
um, or like how do you make sure it's viable? Like what, what's the process for you before like building yeah, to yeah. playing to publishing the video? All right, so I guess once, I, once I've got the 60, I'll probably do about, I don't know, uh, 10 or so, like uh, first turn, like turn one, turn two, turn three sometimes, just to see like, how it flows. Because there's no point in like, you getting my sister down and playing some games. It's tech, like, just, that doesn't do anything, right? So I'll do, I'll, 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 I'll do some solitaire. I'll pretend I get money every so often, or I just took a knockout, what a greedy geezer he was. And then like, so um, I'll do some of that. And then like, if it's flowing, if it's working, or if it needs some changes, I'll go back to the lab, do that. Um, and then from now, I'll just start rocking into best of threes with my uh, sister, really. Um, we'll go into like, I'll probably say, about five or so, best of threes, different matchups sometimes just to see. Uh, sometimes test the bad matchups as well, even though you know it's gonna be bad, try it anyway. Um, try against like obviously the poster boys of the format. So like, let's say now, let's just say the new set was coming out next week and I was doing some new stuff. You have to test against Turner, you have to test against ADP, like it just has to happen. Um, so yeah, then from there, if the best of threes go well, um, then, I'll, then I'll look for, then I'll probably make some changes if needed. And then from there, we'll move into like the full deck profile video um, that I would uh, record, obviously. And then sometimes as well, if I can, I'd like to get a best of three uh, recorded for um, the channel as well. So if people want to see this stuff in action, like stuff like um, the risk taker deck, for example, all sounds well and good on paper. You actually want to see it work. You want to see, right, can you actually, you know, get get the Glimwood, get the Twin Energy, get the Lucky Egg? How many does Muck hit on occasion? Because it's all well and good saying in a deck profile, but you need to see it as well, right? So I try and get some gameplay as well. So yeah, like when you're building future format, how often like do you feel that you kind of hit the nail on the head about what might be coming out and how often are you like over, not even in left field, but on a completely different like, you know, field over there on an, in another city? Uh, yeah, no. uh, anyone who knows me locally in the UK, right? I'm one of those people that I've walked up to some events sometimes with some bonkers things. Not so much now, but like back in the day, like I was playing, uh, I played Speed Charizard Entei way before that was a deck. I played, uh, I played Aqua Box before Max Elixir was a card. So sometimes, like if there's like seven shade creations, I'd say maybe like two of them could actually be really good. Like uh, for more recent examples, like uh, Jirachi Prism in ADP and Zacian. I was doing that way before that was a thing. <laughs> as soon as, as, soon as um, Mr. Mom came out, I was like, oh, I know exactly what I'm playing this with. <laughs> um, but then sometimes equally, like I think one of my first post rotation deck profiles was like Salamence VMAX Colossal. That one ain't really, uh, <laughs> that one's not really doing much in all honesty. But um, I mean, hey, I try and put like a deck a day. So sometimes are gonna be good. Um, <laughs> and, uh, it was equally sometimes uh, there's, there's some diamonds in the rough for sure but uh, I, I like to like play into the fun aspect of the game as well so sometimes i will just play stuff for fun like recently porygon z is like my bay like oh i love me some porygon z might not ever be like you know tippy top tier one or whatever but you know you can have some fun with it for sure so i guess answering your question how often do i hit um i'd say 25 percent 30 percent i mean the way the hey, if you're batting the way 300 the... that's good in baseball yeah i mean yeah if i was playing baseball yeah. <laughs> i i guess the way the the way the pokemon sets have been going recently though i feel as if there's not really like a whole lot of super room to sort of like get completely bonkers in the sense that v max and adp are like so like ridiculously bonkers like eternals you know it's having 340 like you have to be hitting like what uh one 160, 160 to even two shot. No, with zigzagoon pings like as 170 well. 170 to two shot. Yeah. 170, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which when I first started playing, 170 was a one shot. So that just sees how bonkers we are getting. But uh, like, unless they start printing stage one and two, that just do silly things. I think you're almost forced into uh, playing V V matches or whatever remaining tag teams are left. And then when you look at a set and like you look at just it really limits. You know, the amount of stuff you can get bonked with. I mean, you have stuff like Butterfree VMAX, for example. Like, well, we know that's not going to be good. <laughs> so <laughs> there's not really too much room to, like, get too bonkers. Um, so, yeah, I'd say like, to get back to credit. About 30, 25, 30%. <laughs> I'd say that's pretty good. Uh, I will say, Combo Zacian, you were the first person to put out a deck profile and some gameplay with that. And uh, obviously, that had a lot of success. Uh, but I think it took even like a month after the set came out for it to actually start seeing success. But you put a, a future format video of that out uh, well in advance of that. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> it was impressive. It was impressive. 
All right. Uh, I think uh, that's uh, that's it for me on these future format questions. Obviously, uh, I'll let you plug all your stuff. If you want to, if you want to see all the crazy decks and things that we've been talking about. Yeah, so if you want to come see some of the crazy stuff, I've got a list of decks I have to play today, and some of them are bonkers. Uh, check us out on uh, YouTube, The Slow Poke Well. Um, if you want like a bit more in-depth behind-the-scenes stuff, get me on Twitter as well, Hot Chalk PTCG. We've also got a Facebook page as well, uh, The Slow Poke Well. But yeah, come have some fun. That's what we like to try and do around it. Have some fun, play some... Play some good stuff, play some, you know, questionable fun stuff as well. Like, you know what I mean? We're just, we're just here to have a good fun time. And that's what we're, and that's what we do over at the Slow Poet World for sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Thank you for, uh, for joining me. All right. Thanks to Shay for having that conversation with me. It's always interesting to, uh, to hear how other people maybe build these future format decks, uh, especially other creators and things. So uh, thank you again for coming on and uh, having a conversation with me. Hopefully y'all enjoyed it. Um, yeah, like I said, check out his channel, link in the description, makes awesome content, awesome decks, etc. Uh, and thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you in a future one. Carpe awesome.